E tu ti vai a chiederle dietro, dai! You're young! What are you gonna do when you're old? <laughs> Look at him, he comes first! You guys, 75 years old, he's, uh, he's walking ahead of you guys. Okay, this church here was a French church. This is where the Italians used to come and do La Messe des Italiens. The, the, the priest would allow them to do one mass in Italian. The French priest would stand at the door and not let the French people into the Italian mass because he didn't want them to give money to the Italian priest. Now what happened was is that the priest wanted to charge... Hold this, I want to see if I can get the picture of this. Um, uh, the priest wanted to charge $75 for weddings. And, commun and funerals. And that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Like, you're talking like in the 30s. Yeah. Yeah. If you're making $400 a year, hello. Yeah. Okay, so the Italians said, well, wait a minute, this is not going to work out here. <laughs> like, it's like, it's not like we have money here, you know, like nobody had money. And so they were very expensive. So that's how, that was one of the reasons they tried really, really hard to open up San Giovanni Bosco. That's the third Italian church in Montreal. The funny thing is, is that all the French churches in in, in Villamar are closing, and that one is actually still managed to stay uh, alive, which is incredible. I have a picture of this church. Uh, I wanted to uh, here. See, this was Father Chanchuli. Was a this was the choir because they, they had a their choir, and then that was the priest that. Um, for churches, it's modern, it's almost industrial looking, it almost looks like a art deco industrial, but like, it's very un-Japanese, it's exquisite church, they put it to a good reuse, now it's good. Also here there used to be an Italian church, um, a French school, and there was also another French school over there. Yeah, over there. This was a presentation that we did behind the tanks. Who remembers the tanks that were here? We used to work there. You remember them? Oh yeah. Of course. Okay. Hold on. You gotta see these pictures. You're gonna, it's gonna blow you away. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Back here. Just come here for a second, then you can like take the lounge again. <laughs> this was the Sal Coke. Oh yes, I remember. That was only Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. If you look at some of these pictures, look at how the men used to work. This is a this is a former worker of the Sal Coke right over here. Okay. Coke was used to heat the houses. These were furnaces that burned like 2,000 degrees. The men used to work on these things without any safety equipment, eh? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And what did they used to do? They, you know what they used to do to these poor guys? They used to say, like, no, no safety things like today. And you can see all this thing. They used to say, oh, don't worry, you, you have a problem. Uh, for a yeah. weekend. Just breathe the air for a weekend, you'll be fine. Oh, are you kidding? Okay? Wow. And how many times, eh? Una volta l'anno, when you once, uh, once a year, somebody will come by, like uh, an inspector. Okay, this is Gigalto, over here. Oh yeah, I can see. Okay, over here, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, you see, oh, this That's is nice. him when he worked in Italy. This was, you know, the crane? We all know the crane. Still by the uh, canal. Okay, the, the director on... Um, on uh, That's the only thing that's left, they have to sell yeah. coke. Yeah, is that crane. Down, see, this true? is all the coke, what? I heard you want to take out that crane, is it true? I'm going to tie myself to that group. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's going to be two. He's going to be the first one there. Okay. These were like piles of coke. The kids just go and play on it. This, this was like our mountain, right? Okay, if you see. But just to get, look at this. Okay, I mean, I, like he was telling me there was a guy who had actually fell, fallen in that. Okay, look at this. This is like in the 20s. I want you to notice the safety equipment. Yeah, yeah. 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 Lots clothes. of it, yeah. Okay, I want you to notice the safety clothes. Yeah. A baseball cap. Yeah. Okay. There's no boots that are uh, steel okay, nice boots. No. This guy's standing 175 feet above uh, the Ocean oh Canal at this point when this oh, picture's taken. Wow. And this is in the 30s. Were there lots of injuries, do you think? People got hurt I often? Think it's a mal, eh? <laughs> See, they don't talk. You know what's strange about the end of uh, the, all of these guys? There's Gerardo again. They don't again. talk about it. No, you know what? It's, there's Gerardo again. 
You know what's interesting about the laborer stories? Because I've done so many laborer stories with so many different things here. They downsize. They 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 talk. They don't talk about the injuries. They don't talk about the, the difficulties. There used to be two boxes. Like, uh, Gagillo. Remember Gerardo Gagillo? He worked in these two um, hermetically sealed uh, boxes that were like, let's say the size of St. John Bosco School. Okay, there was a gas that was in there. Now, what used to happen, I'll just give you an example. Okay, you see this is, I just want you to get an idea of the landscape that was here. Okay, these were the tanks. Okay. See? Um, this is the South Coke, the workers. Now, the guys, what they used to do, like this, just the story of Trigaldo, for example, okay, they worked in these things, they used to have to put in this, um, uh, the, the tanks, let me start again, the tanks were manufactured gas, it was, it, they, they held 1,900,000 1, um, uh, American gallons of manufactured gas. They would go up and down these things. Okay. Now they used to have these 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 boxes called. The Italians used to call them uh, la boxa gas. Okay, gas boxes. But la boata gas. La boata a gas. Yeah. Okay. And um, after the, the, this, would, this was part of the process of making this manufactured gas. Now this guy, his friend, would go in there after, and they had to break the straw that was in it because it was hard. You, this, they, do you know how toxic this stuff was? And they couldn't survive after five minutes, five, ten minutes, and they would faint. And, and when I, just to, to answer your question yeah. about the injuries, I'm, I'm they didn't even a get long to story. the story. Mm -hmm. He said to and even him, he, they, they, he said to me, I said, well, what did they used to do? And he goes like, well, you go in there and you work as much as you can. And after five, ten minutes, if you're going to faint, you just go outside and you get some air and then you go back in. They normalized. Yeah. They yeah. normalized accidents. They normalized. There were no their unions, huh? Yeah. There was no union. Like the blue I even today. asked them. I said, well, "What about working. strikes?" Mm. You know, because they had gone on strike once. Because it was even Dosco. And it, and it, you made me laugh because he says to me, he "Goes, well, what strike? We didn't even know what that word meant." Uh huh. Okay, mm. they just wanted to work. And what do you think? What do you think the Italians said when they, they went on strike? They went to work at the scrapyards. <laughs> Somewhere else. Yeah. That's <laughs> all. Okay. They're mm. like, "Oh my God!" I they didn't walk around with tickets. Tomorrow. They didn't walk around. No, <laughs> they had to, right? They paid seven dollars to carry this, uh, for the picketage. Seven, yeah, yeah. Yeah, seven, seven dollars seven a week. Yeah. Seven oh, dollars yeah. a week. These guys were working in the scrapyards. They didn't want to stop working. So, the industries needed guys like him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, because they went in there. They worked. They worked twelve hours a day. They had twenty minutes for lunch. Okay, and I asked them. I said, "Where did you eat lunch? Did you go to the cafeteria?" He's like, "Okay, cafeteria." cafeteria. <laughs> okay, you know those On furnaces I showed you? The guys ate there. Oh. Okay. They, they, this guy, when he would come home from work at the beginning, he was all black. The first day he went home, his wife didn't recognize him. He was all black. <laughs> eh? Because he was ringing the doorbell. She didn't open the door. <laughs> she only opened the door because he smiled and she recognized his teeth. <laughs> no, no, okay. no, but what I'm saying is like, they had nothing, okay? And still, and they went every day because their, their objective was to have a family, to have a job. To have a house mm -hmm. and to take care of their kids, and they did that. In in a statistic, and, tax. <laughs> yes. and, tax. Right. and the statistics show 60% of the Italians bought a home in five to ten years. No, in two to five years. Wow. 20% bought it in, in less than two years. Wow. And the other 20% bought it between five and ten. That's years. impressive. So 100% of the, the Italians bought it right. Right. They were bought it. Yeah, they were buying them. Yeah. No mortgage, no you mean? No. Well, some of them had mortgage, yeah, saying, you know, yeah, but they saved their money. They saved their money and they bought the houses. They used to have a garden. They had a garden. <laughs> now, the reason yeah, I talk about behind the tanks is that the, this Newman Street, is Newman Boulevard is very important in terms of a social street in a way for me because, first of all, this is Newman Park, as you know. Over there you have the steel mill. Back there was Dosco, right? It was the Canadian Tube and Steel Company that started like 1911, something like that. And uh, so you had the steel mills going over there. You had uh, Truscon Steel, where Jeanette's father used to work. That was considered a really good job because the air was clean in there. There were welders that worked in there. Uh, so you had Truscon Steel over there.